Hey, it's me, Darius. Many of you are seeing your teachers use terms like grades, required, and expected learning. What exactly do all these terms mean for students over the next eight weeks? We tackle that question in this episode of The Hub. A little tidbit about me, I do not like boring. Me and boring do not get along. I don't like being in the same room as boring. Hey, boring bot. I don't respond to Boring's text messages. I don't want anything to do with Boring. So believe me when I tell you that I will be doing my very best to keep the hub as entertaining as it is informational. And if you think this information is helpful, please pass it along to your people. Okay, let's dive in. It is true that credits are going to be a part of the distance learning starting April 20th. So let's talk about these credits. You remember letter grades? They were all connected to credits for graduation. Well, A's and B's were, and so were C's and D's, but not F's. F's, as we all know, stood for forgot to get the credit. AKA, didn't show up for class, didn't do the homework, didn't turn in Mr. Meyer's PowerPoint on time, forgot to get the credit. These credits are what you will be earning over the next eight weeks as you complete the learning activities. I know, I know, this could be stressful, but I actually think this is a good thing. Let me explain in a list I call the top, the top three top reasons why earning, why earning credits, credits while we're, while in, we're quarantine in quarantine is a, is a good, good thing. Day, 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 day. Wordy title, I know. Sorry, English department. Reason number one, these credits are totally doable. Listen, the school district understands that the highest priority during this pandemic is the health and safety of you and your family. The district also understands that we have a lot of things we're trying to balance during this time. So the amount of work being assigned over the next eight weeks will be less work than what was assigned before we were quarantined. Let me say that again. The amount of work being assigned over the next eight weeks will be less work than what was assigned before we were quarantined. If you've been keeping up with your work since school closed, then you know that it's been a few A-day assignments on Monday and a few B-day assignments on Tuesday. And then you have the rest of the week to get it done. If you haven't been keeping up with your work since school closed, you should probably check your email. Number two, work at your own pace. For some of you, this slower pace is perfect. You'll be able to slow down and take your time with this new way of learning. For those of you that feel like the pace is too slow, have you checked the internet for different things to learn about? Because there's stuff out there, I promise. As I mentioned, you will be assigned learning activities on Monday and Tuesday of every week. Yes, there will be deadlines to meet, but when you decide to study during the day is completely up to you. Maybe you know you work best first thing in the morning. Set a one to two hour block of time after breakfast and then take a break to do other things like jobs around the house, exercise, etc. Maybe you have scheduled Fortnite training sessions because you and your friends are using your extra time to become pro gamers. Cool. Do your work outside of those times. What I'm trying to tell you is you can get your work done when you want. All I'm asking you to do is schedule a time in your day to get it done. Have you found a schedule that works for you? I'm curious to know what's working out there. Number three, work in your own place. Learning at home means you don't have to sit in those uncomfortable school chairs or by that annoying kid in your math class. You get to work in your own comfort zone. It doesn't need to take up a lot of space. It could simply be a corner of a room at home. The key is making it yours. Keep all your academic things in one spot School computer, books, papers, pens, notes. Make a space away from distractions. Video games, family members, your pet turtles. Challenge yourself to spend a little time in your study space daily. Whew, okay, that is a lot of information. Let's take a breath, and let's take it in a way that has been proven to calm stress and anxiety. What we're going to do is take a deep breath through your nose for 4 seconds, hold that for 7 seconds, and then release that breath for eight seconds. It looks like this. <sighs> nice. You can do that whenever you start feeling stressed or overwhelmed. Trust me, it works. I hope that you're starting to see how doable this whole learning from home thing can be. And really, we all have the chance during this time to develop some really great habits that will lead us all into healthy living down the road. But developing those habits are completely up to you. We're just here to give you some guidance. And of course, make things fun. 
We want to hear from you. If this was helpful, give it a like, leave a comment, send us an email. Also, if you think this video could help out a friend or a family member, give it a share and help us get the word out. All right, check back soon for more videos. We've got some cool things up our sleeves. Stay tuned. Stay safe out there, Storm. Darius out.